I would want you to imagine a company that is owned by somebody and people are competing for positions. They want to be managers. They want to be what? And then the sun comes and starts competing for those positions. It is not possible. This reminds me of a company that I used to work for. And we found children. There was a boy and a girl. And they were young when we were joining. And we were so used to some things. <clears throat> we thought we know the father, of course, had even favorites in that company. But when the boy came, he doesn't know if you are the father's favorite. What he learned in school is what he came to implement. And his, his, his word was as good as the father's word. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to our show uh, once again. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you. I'm so grateful that you have found time to come and that we may have a time to fellowship together. This is the Marvelous Believer Show on Wema TV and I'm your host, uh, Lucy Lepore. And uh, last week was awesome. Last week, I believe you are there. You can testify with me that we were so blessed as we discussed sonship, sons and heirs of the kingdom. It was so such a blessing as we went through. You know, Grace brought it so so plainly, so easily for us to understand how we have been brought into the family, how we belong to the family of God. And it's so encouraging when we discuss things like that, when those realities begin to sink in us, that we have a family, that we belong to a family, that we have been accepted in the family of God, that we've been made core heirs of the kingdom. Those are realities that when they, we internalize and they become part of us, they give us victory even as we continue in our journey of faith. They give us confidence. They give us joy. You are not working as an orphan. You have been accepted in a family. You now belong to the family of God. God has reconciled you back to himself. That was such an encouragement. And today uh, we are so blessed that we are able to bring grace again to the studio. I know there is much more that we are going to learn concerning our position as sons. Our position as sons. Last week I was saying it was the greatest position that can be given to humanity. So I am excited that we are continuing with this topic of sonship and our position as the sons of the kingdom. So stay tuned. Just uh, give us those few minutes. I know God is going to bless you and to speak to you without... Uh, Taking much more of your time, I want to allow Grace to come in and so she can continue with her teaching. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy. I am so excited to be here once again. Thank you so much for watching uh, last week. Uh, last week, uh, we learned about sons and hairs. And I'm so excited to continue with the same topic. We learned that we are born of God. We are not born of human will, not of husbands and wives, but we are born of God. And we learned that our DNA <clears throat> is from God. So we have the same DNA as God. And it was very exciting to know that we are in the family of God. In this family, like any other family, there's a way we do things, there's a language we speak, and uh, it is a good family to be in because we were predestined before. Everything was planned for us before we became members of this family. And uh, we learned that uh, that for, 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 uh, for a child to, I, I mean, if you remain a child, even if you are a member of that family, if you remain a child, you may not inherit what belongs to that family until you become of age. So we learned that we have to grow up to from children to become sons. And as we continue with that uh, topic, uh, I think if you missed that, you can go back to our YouTube channel, Wema TV, you'll see that. And as we continue with that topic, uh, we also mentioned that uh, sonship is the highest position. And I would say <clears throat> the reason most people compete for positions is because they do not know that they are sons in the kingdom. Uh, positions like in churches, you find there are people who are competing for positions. And we respect the offices because uh, offices were ordained. The Bible says that he called some to be 
So those who are ordained uh, from the beginning, you cannot call yourself to be a teacher, to be a prophet, to be those ones. It is Jesus who, who appointed some to be. And we respect them because they are for equipping us with the gospel, equipping us to, be, to take our positions as the sons. And the highest position is to be a son. The reason most people want to be pastors even when they are not called or they want to take positions in church is because they do not uh, realize that the highest position you can ever have is the position of a son. I would want you to imagine a company that is owned by somebody and people are competing for positions. They want to be managers. They want to be what? And then the son comes and starts competing for those positions. It is not possible because the moment... This reminds me of a company that I used to work for uh, before I started my own business. And we found children. There was a boy and a girl, and they were young when we were joining. I stayed there for about six years. For those six years, they grew up, they finished campus, and they came and joined us in the company. And I'm telling you, when they joined is when we knew the difference between servants and sons. Because the, the lady took over accounts where the mother was doing. The mother is the one who was in charge of human resource and accounts. The, the girl took over. The boy took over like we didn't even know which position he took. Because as a son, you don't even <laughs> need to have a position. But what I would tell you, the, what they learned in school, they came to implement in that company. And we were so used to some things. <clears throat> we thought we know the father, of course, had even favorites in that company. But when the boy came, he doesn't know if you are the father's favorite. What he learned in school is what he came to implement. And his 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 word was as good as the father's word. You had to do what he has said he will do. And he was so young that we found him growing. We saw him growing and he graduated and came and joined the company. And he took over as the son. So the reason most people compete for positions, it was very hard for him to come and start competing for positions. Etia was the manager and then he wants to be a manager. By just him coming to that company, he, he's, that's his inheritance. He doesn't need any position. And his word is as good as the father's word. So that is what we, we, we need to do in the kingdom. Instead of competing for positions, oh, I want to be this, I want to be this, I, the church has not given me a position, we need to know that we are sons in the kingdom. And I would also want us to go to, direct to the word of God uh, to read Romans 8 from verse 15. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, Romans 8, from verse 15 to 17. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful, slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. So we are not servants. We have not received the spirit of being fearful. Because I have realized one thing also. If you are... Uh, you are doing the work of the kingdom as a slave or as a servant. You live in a lot of fear. You have fear of failure in the ministry. You, the fear of God is not the adoration of God and knowing how supreme he is. It is the fear of God punishing you. And you see, we, slaves are the ones who fear to be punished. They work for money. They fear if they don't do this, they will not be paid. They do things to be paid. But as, as, as those are slaves and servants, but we should take position as sons to know that we are not, we did not receive the spirit of fear. We are not in the kingdom to serve the Lord as servants. We are taking our positions. This is our kingdom. So we are not living in fear of being punished. This is a loving father who loves us so much and he has already given us the inheritance. And we learned last time that when he does that, he, he's, he has so much joy in us because we are his children and he planned for us before the foundations of the earth. His greatest urge <clears throat> was to have children. He was a father and yet he didn't have children. So we should know that we are already accepted. We should not be in fear. We received the spirit not of uh, we received the spirit. The Bible says the spirit that you did not receive the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received the God spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So he's our father. 
And from the from, from when uh, the world was created, Jesus is the one who came and called God Father. And actually, that is what crucified Jesus. Blasphemy. So the, he's the one who came and because he, the Bible says that he's the firstborn. And he's the one who 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 came in and and uh, like revealed God as a father. Before then, God was not revealed as a father. And most people, as they refer to God today, when they look at the Old Testament, it makes them fear God so much that they have still not understood that God is a loving father. They still think he's he's there to he's like a headmaster waiting for you to do wrong things to 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 punish you. You see God as a as a a bad person. Actually, <clears throat> most believers do not even have, cannot even ask questions about the gospel because they fear that you are asking about God. You know, God is so, so, and I'm saying, yes, he's very supreme, but he's a loving father. He planned everything for us. He adopted us as his children. And the Bible says that the spirit we received, we cannot call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And I keep saying, when you look at even fathers in the world, in the, like the natural fathers we have, like your own father or the other fathers we have in the world, when I look at what God, when God says that we are his children, and sometimes I look at how people view God, the view of God as when you see bad things happen, people say it is God who is punishing the world. When you see bad things, bad things. And I wonder, there's a day I was saying, I think if God was living in this world, maybe even human rights would have arrested him. He would be so bad, such a bad father, that even the human rights would have arrested him. I don't know why we confuse the things that the devil does with the things that God does. Like we look at God, anything wrong, you go, you, you, something happens wrong in your life and you start saying it is the, it is God who is punishing me. Like seriously, a loving father, just ask yourself, like sickness, for example, you get sick and you say it is God who is punishing you. You yourself, would you punish your own child with sickness? Let's start there with sickness. Like, would you give your child cancer? And yet you are a, a physical father. You're not, you, you're not righteous. You're not, I mean, you're just even a drunkard father. I don't think they can give their child cancer. And then, and yet people are believing that God is so mad at us. He has sent diseases in the world. I think we, we confuse the love of a father. And God loves us so much. It is not even like the love of, like the love of our natural fathers. He's, he loves us with so so much with an everlasting love, whether you love him or not, whether you reciprocate or not, there are, he will not love you more or less. You just need to accept that love. He loves you so much that the only thing you need to do is just to accept that love. So the world has been confusing the things that the devil is doing and they, they put it on God. They say it is God who is doing those things. As we continue with uh, verse 17, <clears throat> So, so 16, we have said that uh, his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. So you should not be, your spirit even affirms that you are a, a child of God. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share with his glory, we must also share with his suffering. So what does that mean? As coheres, because, okay, this is a kingdom and this is a family and it is our kingdom. But being coheres does not mean you own 50% and I own 50%. It means we both own 100%. Owning 100% both of us means you cannot do without the other and the other cannot do without the other. Meaning, uh, as much as, okay, we, I know it may sound different, but it is true that God needs us. Because in this world, I had said last week that we are the ones that are being, the creation is waiting for us to manifest in this world. And why God needs us is because this world is a physical world. We are physical beings 
living in a physical world. In a physical world, spirits cannot operate in a physical world without a body. Demons cannot operate here without a body. The same way, even God cannot operate here without a body. And we are the, the physical beings that God is using. Even when Jesus was coming to this world, God had to cooperate with Mary for him to for, for, for Mary to accept to carry Jesus and to be born in this world because this is a physical world. And we know ev everything uh, physical starts spiritual, but for it to, to happen spiritually, I mean physically, we need a physical body. Like uh, for Jesus to come to this world, Mary accepted and said, be it and to me according to your will. And that's how Jesus, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit entered into Mary and he conceived a child. And the same way, as co heirs for, for the creation to manifest, I mean, for Jesus to manifest what the creation is waiting, we have to take positions as the sons because we are the ones who will make that happen. Right now, if we are to go and heal the sick, Jesus is doing that in us. He doesn't have physical hands. He doesn't have physical... I mean, he has to use our body. So we have to accept to be coheres in that kingdom. So it is us to go heal the sick. And in the same, in, at the same time, for us to be... Because the Bible says that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places and over and above every principality, we have to, to be coheres in Christ. As in Christ and him in us, we have to cooperate. For us to be seated in the, in the heavenly places, we have to, to partner with Christ. For, for us to, for, 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 for the, I mean, for healing and the rest to manifest in this world, we have to accept us as the believers, as the sons. We have to take our positions as the sons to manifest here on earth. Because, uh, God did everything. He finished sickness and disease. He finished the devil conclusively. He finished curses. He finished poverty. But how do we? How does that manifest? We have ourselves now to take our part. It is not up to God. God did everything. But for it to be a, a, a kingdom that is operating here on earth, it is us to take now that position. We take our as the co-heirs. We, we take part in that, in, in that kingdom. We go and heal the sick. We go and lay our hands on the sick. Then they get healed. We go and cast out demons. And the same way, even uh, for, for the kingdom of the devil still to work on this, uh, there are people who have already given themselves. Like witches, they have decided the devil is using me. And the devil uses them. And we have seen, we have seen the manifestations of the of the kingdom of darkness because there are people who have accepted as physical beings in this world they have accepted to be used of the devil so even us as believers we need to take our positions as the sons and accept to be used of god and accept that god has done everything it is us to take positions it is us to take over it is us to go out there and manifest as the sons of god so uh the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the firstborn and he came as a seed so that all of us can be born. And once we are born of the spirit, we are able to do everything that Christ did when he was here on earth. And now Christ is now here on earth through us. He lives in us. So, and the Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. So as, as, as the sons, Jesus being our firstborn, we have the same position like Jesus. Like when we were talking about the family last week, you cannot have one child who is more of a hair of, the, of, of, of your inheritance than the other. Jesus is the firstborn because he came and he became a seed and we were all born. But everything that Christ did, we can also do. Everything that he did, we can also do. Because the Bible says that as he is right now, so are we in this world. 
in this world, not in the world to come, as Christ is right now. And you know, when Christ was here on earth, first of all, before he died, he was already performing miracles. He was already doing wonderful things. And then there is that Christ before death. Then there is the resurrected Christ. But right now, we are not even talking about that Christ. We are talking about the glorified Christ. We are talking about the Christ that John saw and he was he fell down as, as if he's dead. The same Christ he used to walk with, when he saw him glorified, he could not, the, the physical being, for, he could not, man, I mean, understand, and he could not, like, sustain, his physical body could not sustain that Christ who is glorified. Because... He, he, and that is the, uh, what I mean is that is who we are now, as he is right now. That is who we are. We are glorified in him. We, we are able to do wonderful things. We are able to do, I mean, there is nothing. When we take positions, there is, there is, that is our inheritance. There is nothing that can, ca can be had for us in this world. And God did everything, so he's expecting us. It is our part. So when you see things not working, in this world, like when you see bad things happening, even to good people, when you see even bad things maybe happening to you or to your loved ones, don't, don't ask God, why are these things happening? Why is God not doing anything? Can't God see that there are floods? Can't God see that there are diseases? Can't God see that children are being raped? It is us now who, t who will take that position. God has done everything. So it is the church now to take positions as the sons, to stop those things. Because we have all the power and authority. When you see uh, things happening and there is no solution, we know as the sons how to give solutions. Because they start in the spirit as they come to physical. And we are able to access them. We are spiritual beings. We are able to access them in the spirit and cancel those things because, before they become spiritual. So as people are looking for solutions, and most people are looking into heaven to look for solutions, we are the solutions give us as the sons. We manifest. That is our inheritance. We are here to do that. That is why we are here. We are here to shape the kingdom here on earth. Because we are here on earth and the kingdom is already here through us. The kingdom is already living inside, inside of us. But we cannot be seeing the manifestations of the, the other kingdom. Because you don't need to look for, for manifestations of the kingdom of the devil. You just need to look to see the diseases. The, the, there are so many bad things that are happening right now. And the same thing we need to... To, to, to be to take positions as the sons and the heirs of the kingdom so that you don't need to look for miracles. You don't need to look for cripples walking. Like it should be obvious because we are so many believers, but we have not taken our positions. Such that today, if, there is, if something happens, like a miracle happens, most people will, actually most people will criticize Others will say it is a fake thing that has happened. And if it is a real miracle, people will be like, ah, you mean that can happen? Why? Because we have not taken positions as sons. Those things need to be like the order of the day. They need to be like our, our normal life, spiritual life. Our normal, it should be, life in the spirit should be our normal way of living. We should, miracles should be everywhere. People should not be shocked that there is a miracle that happened. Miracles should be everywhere, like the like what Christ was manifesting when he was here. And so, uh, as we take that, I would also want us to read um, Luke 12.32. Luke 12.32. Because I would want us to, to understand that the things we are talking about are not for special people. They are not for pastors and bishops and the ones that have the prophets it they i'm talking about as believers and the bible says that do not be afraid little flocks for it is your father's uh, great happiness to give you the kingdom so the things we are talking about the kingdom it is the happiness of the father for us to have them he has already given us and he'll be so happy when you are manifesting them we are not like, it is not like, uh, you should not even think 
twice like should i go and pray for the sick should i go am i worthy enough the bible says that when, when jesus left this world the last uh, like the last commission he he said go ye into the whole world preach the gospel and those who believe they will do five things not those who not those who are preachers not those who are pastors it is it is the pleasure of god to give us that it is like just like the way you would be so happy when you give your son an inheritance healing the laying hands on the sick and they get healed speaking in tongues casting out demons those are the things that every believer should do it is not the work of pastors it is the work of sons it is not the work of uh, the appointed people like i think I, I, there is a testimony i once had from a lady who who was listening to the believers authority message for like 5 years and he gave a testimony she gave a testimony she wrote a, uh, i think most of you know uh, a minister called Andrew Womack and she was giving a, she was writing to Andrew Womack to give a testimony of what happened she had listened to him for for long and she had not even mentioned or said she has ever listened to she was just a faithful listener and nobody knew about it and when she was giving that uh message i mean testimony she wrote to say thank you for your teachings because i knew what to do when my husband died do you know what she did she was told the husband died she walked she she went to where the husband is she raised the husband from the dead and they continued as if nothing had happened because she had listened to the word and she had taken position she's not a pastor she's not she's just a believer a, a, a believer doing her own businesses but she knew what to do she raised the husband from the dead so we just need to take our positions as not as even pastors or just take your position where you are as a son and as we finish i would want us to read psalms uh psalms 82 psalms 82 verse 6 from verse 6 i say you are gods you are all children of the most high god but you will die like mere men and fall like every other ruler this one makes me sad that if we don't take our positions we just, we can just die like mere men and yet we are gods imagine you have all the power and authority you are a god you can do everything that god can do just think about it the things you pray every day for god to do it's you to do them but if you don't do them because god already did his part if you don't do them you just die like a mere man like a mortal man and yet we are spiritual beings we should take positions as sons so that we don't die like mere men you have all the power and authority the, the bible says behold i give you power you're seated in the heavenly places with, with christ above every prosperity and yet you are fearing the devil you're just living like a mere man take position as a son know who you are the first the first thing is to know which now we know the next thing pray in tongues we have been given a language every time in in for us to fellowship in families we we talk we talk and we have our own languages in this family we have a language of tongues speaking tongues declare things god created everything through declarations through words declare The moment you know speaking tongues declare things call forth things talk confess them you are here your ears will hear them and until it will enter in your spirit just talk, confess and confess and confess them then meditate on the word of god when the when you read the word of god meditate on it think about it Th- right left think about it How, what does it say about me so being a son think about that word meditate on it pray about it and with that we are going to manifest who we are in Christ 
we are going to give solutions to this world because the world is rotten already. The world is already manifesting the evil things. The world is already manifesting the things of the devil. Let us rise up as sons so that we can manifest who we are in Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Keep shining, keep reigning in Christ. Let us go and manifest who we are in Christ. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. That was quite a teaching. That was awesome. Thank you so much for that teaching. And I know, I know we've been blessed and challenged. Let us arise. It's our responsibility to mature. It's our responsibility as the believers, the marvelous believers, to mature so that we are able to manifest God into, the, into this world. The whole creation is waiting to see us glorified. Let us take that response. Knowledge is the revelation. I was just meditating this week about the, the opportunity or the advantage of having knowledge. The revelation knowledge, it is what, what helps us to understand. So that now we know uh, it is my responsibility to mature. I was born, yes, I'm born again, yes, I'm in this family. But I can mature to have responsibility and to manifest God in this kingdom. Let the kingdom of God manifest in this world. People, like she has said, you don't have to look for wickedness. It's all over. There can be a time, I believe, and now it is for us to arise so that you don't have to look for miracles. They are all over. You don't have to look for supernatural life. It is all over. It is the norm. Hallelujah. That was, that was powerful. I know we are blessed. And thank you for watching us, the Marvelous Believer Show, coming to you every Monday at this time. And we keep coming on air, continue praying with us, continue supporting us, and God bless you.